Rocket League has come a long way since the game dropped in 2015. And in my over 2,000 hours playing, there are definitely some things I'm happy with, but there are five huge things I regret and wish I would have done differently. So in this video, I'm going to be going over the top five Rocket League tips I wish I knew when I started because I swear if I would have done these things sooner or avoided things like tip number three and tip number five, I could have got to where I am now with two times or three times the speed. We're trying something a little bit different today, so if you're new to the channel, consider subbing. It's completely free and you can always unsub whenever you want. Anyways, let's get right into it. Before we get started, I want to give a shout out to the video sponsor, me again. If you're new here guys, you know that I don't take paid promotions on my YouTube channel because I don't like to push products on people that I can't get behind myself. Which is why I wanted to congratulate the over 50 players that took the leap and joined season 2 of my private coaching program, the Grand Champ Roadmap. When this video drops, we're going to be closing our doors temporarily to start training with the new players, but if you want to get involved, stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to give more info about when my program is coming online again. Anyways, let's get back to the program number one. The first tip I wish I knew when I started playing Rocket League was get my settings sorted first. In the time I played Rocket League, guys, I must have switched my settings four or even five times, and I wish I would have just taken my own advice and set up and got the optimal settings down when I started playing. I remember in 2015 when I started the game, the actual mechanical ceiling for what you had to do to win or even be at the top level was so low that settings really didn't matter. You could pick whatever settings you want and as long as you could get comfortable with them, you could win. But since then, I've gone from being a KBM player to being a controller Xbox player to being a PS4 player to trying the PS5 controller to changing my arrow settings multiple times and I wish I would have just started out on controller with the settings I have now. This is one of those things that you're not going to realize how important it is until you've already sunk a thousand, two thousand, three thousand hours into the game and you realize it's too late. Bruh. So learn from my mistakes, guys. Go ahead right now. Go check out a settings guide on YouTube. Get your air roll binds, get your controller binds, and get everything set up when you start playing. So that way you don't have to spend hours upon hours relearning your controls later like I had to do multiple times. Number two is a huge training tip that I wish I would have had when I started playing, guys. It's start playing workshop maps right now. When I started playing the game, the only way we could get better was by the default Rocket League training packs or in free play. And trust me, guys, the actual speed at which you can learn the game, if you do it right starting now, is night and day compared to what it was when I started playing. If you want to improve mechanically, the fastest way to do it is with workshop maps. Nothing trains aerial car control better than Lethemir's Rings. Nothing trains dribbling better than Dribble 2 Overhaul. Nothing trains shooting better than Aim Trainer, in my opinion. So if you haven't yet, start incorporating workshop maps into your training routine every day, and you're going to get better so much faster than the people who don't. Number three. Don't underestimate Power Slide. For the longest time playing, I didn't really understand what the purpose of Power Slide was. I knew you could use it to maintain momentum, but I didn't really understand the importance of holding down Power Slide at all times. Recently though, I got super lucky. I was playing some games with Thanavik one night and somehow we duo queued threes and got a Vample on our team. And let me tell you, a Vample is cracked at this game for many reasons. But if you ever watch this guy play, the number one thing that always stands out to me is just how smooth his gameplay is. And I was reading comments trying to figure out what it was and what clicked was when I saw somebody comment on how he uses Power Slide. 
So what I want you to do is if you ever watch a high rank player again and they have a controller overlay or something like that, figure out which button they have power side on and watch how often they use it. I've seen a couple of videos on this and there is literally a direct correlation between how much you use power slide and what your rank is in Rocket League. It is actually one of the most accurate predictors of how good a Rocket League player is. Literally just the time they spend power sliding. And I could spend 20 minutes going into the weeds about power slide, but bottom line, what I want you to do is whenever you're landing, whenever you're turning, really whenever you're moving around in the game and you're not going in a straight line, get comfortable tapping on power side for brief periods of time and you're gonna notice how much more sharp and controlled your car can be on the ground when you start incorporating this mechanic. On to another control I wish I would have known sooner, and all the loyal subs are going to know this one, it is learn air roll sooner. This is another one of those mechanics that you don't really realize how important it really is until you start to try to train it. I remember when I was starting, absolutely nobody would use air roll other than to roll their car over if they were falling out of the sky. Nowadays though, air roll is essential in almost every single high level mechanic you wanna do. Anything in the air is going to be built on the foundation of having proper air roll and aerial car control. These days guys, the mechanical ceiling is so much higher than it's ever been. And so if you wanna be able to consistently double tap, flip reset, air dribble, ceiling shot, all these complex mechanics, Learn air roll, it is literally a foundational skill in Rocket League these days, and if you can get a head start on learning it, you are going to be leagues ahead of everybody else in learning this game. Tip number five is something I wish I would have done sooner, and that is fix your PC. <laughs> doesn't matter what you're playing on guys what i've realized is when you get good at rocket league the actual precision you need to have with all your controls is probably in, in my opinion it's higher than any game i've played trust me i've been playing games forever i've played dota 2 i've played league i've played fortnite i've played tf2 i've played overwatch i've played all the mainstream games in the past five to ten years and i am telling you the actual mechanical precision you need to have in rocket league is higher than any other game there are so many inputs you need to have the sensitivity of those inputs needs to be spot on and once you get to a higher level of play, if you are being handicapped by your actual setup or by your system, it's gonna be so hard to push up in ranks. I was talking with one of the season one alums from my coaching program, and he told me something that I didn't even realize, which is there are zero current pro players who play on console. Let me say that again. In Rocket League, unlike any other game, unlike a Fortnite, right, unlike a COD, unlike many other games, there are zero professional console players. And there's a reason for that, right? Having a high refresh rate, having low input lag, and having a responsive controller is so, so important for executing high level mechanics. So there we have it, guys. Those are some of the five biggest mistakes I've made in my Rocket League career that I wish I could have gone back and fixed. We talked about getting your settings better, using workshops more, taking advantage of both power slide and air roll, two mechanics that I really, really think are slept on until you get to the higher ranks. And then lastly, if you haven't yet, upgrade your setup, fix your PC, and invest a little bit in improving those things if you're serious about getting better at the game. Like I said earlier though, if you are serious about getting competitive in Rocket League and you want to take your training to the next level, season three of my private coaching program, the Grand Champ Roadmap, is going to be accepting applications starting in July. Catch is though, if you're watching this right now, guys, you can actually reserve a spot to talk with one of my previous players in the program before that date comes around. So if you're watching this, when the video drops right now, I'm gonna put a link to a video on screen that's gonna have all the most updated info on the program head over there. And if you're interested in learning more about what exactly happens inside the private coaching program, definitely give that a look.
Shout out you if you made it to the end of the video though I want you to go down to the comment section below right now and type hey Luke still got that ps5 controller Because I'm gonna be picking one lucky winner who leaves a comment and who's a member of my discord to take home This ps5 controller. I bought a couple months back that I literally don't use So if you want a free ps5 controller shout out for making it to the end of the video You're now eligible to win it go down to the comment section below ask if I've still got it Join the Discord, and I'll be picking one lucky winner seven days out from now. <laughs> Anyways, guys, that's all I've got for this one. So as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace, guys.